Hi everybody, it's Christine Bertram. I'm coming to you live from the Hive on Monday, May 1st. Happy May Day to everybody. We have a, a different kind of class here for you today. <laughs> Only say that because it's not my usual forte <laughs> making 3D projects with you guys. So I kind of like was trying to pre-plan in my head how to do the class and I'm like, it's just gonna do what we're gonna do. We're just gonna make boxes and mini cards, right? <laughs> Hi, Mary Lemke, my box making buddy and all my other buddies. <laughs> Hi, Debbie Gass. Hi, Francis Rodriguez. Hi, Hilda Nell. Hi, Ann Bellinger. Let the fun begin. Yes, I think I'm, I'm trying not to overthink it, but we are going to do what we're going to do, right? Hi, Kimberly. This class was really odd for me because it wasn't a lot of preparing, <laughs> which I felt guilty for not scoring and not cutting anything, but it's really hard to do that, especially with being a stamp -a stack to do that for everybody. And I knew that if I attempted to cut your paper and score it, I think I would have not been happy and I would have wished I would have never done the class and I didn't want to have that feeling, right? I I don't, <laughs> and I don't know if it was because it was boxes or what it was. Hi, Don Ablett. Hi, Catherine Healy. Hi, Sandy Wicklander. Hi, Susan Ray, Hendrix, and Feline Mays. <laughs> so I, I know how I felt sometimes after a, a really intensive fun folds class where it's a lot of cutting and scoring. I... It can be overwhelming to do that for so many people. Hi, Lisa Spacek. Hi, Bonnie. Uh, thanks for sharing, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the like button. So going into this class, I knew that if I had to do the cutting and the scoring for everybody, I think I would not have ever considered doing another 3D box kind of class in the future. And I didn't want to have that feeling. I didn't even want to put myself there. So I thought to myself, well, as long as I tell people on the upfront that there's going to be scoring and cutting and we're going to do it as a group and i'm not going to leave anybody floundering hopefully that is the plan i just got the video up here too so i gotta like it myself um that hopefully that this would be really successful <laughs> so so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna just roll through it as casually as we can and hopefully everybody does their cutting and scoring good but I will tell you, I did feel guilty sending out full sheets of cardstock. And I thought to myself, well, I wonder what other demonstrators would have done if they had a class like this. Would they have cut for people or would they have scored or what would they have done? But generally, I do a lot and people tell me that I do more than what other demonstrators do. So I, I felt, OK, well, this one time I'm going to take the easy street and we're going to do it as a group together. So that's what we're going to do. But um, Catherine e. Hilly asked how the birthday party was. Well, <laughs> so, so the birthday party was good. Um, we got a little bit later start than what we were thinking we were. Um, hi, Marjorie. Hi, Karen Wettstein. So I went into my bathroom um, during the, so the MS benefit. Let's start over, you guys. So the MS benefit went great. Um, I think we have raised about $2,200-ish, a little bit more than $2,200, less than $2,300, which was phenomenal. Probably our second biggest event. Um, when we did the trafficking uh, to our Underground Railroad, that benefit in the fall, we did $2,600. So $2,200 to $2,300 is amazing. So thank you to everybody. I have a list of everybody who won prizes. It's over on the table over there. Um, I was going to send an email out to, to the community uh, thanking everybody who supported the cause and announced who the winners of the prizes were because I know that people were asking. And so I've, I've tried to contact most people. I know I still owe a few people an email uh, to let them know, but uh, the, the raffle raised like $600, like almost exactly to the penny. And the cards part of it was about 1900 So, and then there were a couple people that donated uh, just to donate. And so it was, it was good. 23 2267 or something like that, almost 2300. So that's awesome. Um, so I, I'm excited to get that check off into the mail for the National MS uh, Society. So that phenomenal, you guys. We do two benefits a year. So those one in the spring, we've always said that we will do that for the MS Foundation because we have a few people on the team that have MS and my sister in law as well. Uh, and we generally know people <laughs> that have MS and have been diagnosed with it. Uh, the other one we've decided to do the fall one is to always switch it up. 
So last year we switched up and we did our Underground Railroad is to help uh, fight and combat human trafficking. And what we decided for the fall one for this October is going to be the Wounded Warriors. And so it's going to be um, helping out veterans. Um, hi, Sarah Mitchell. Uh, and Bonnie is already on it with the raffle baskets. Uh, she was talking to her brother, I believe her brother, who is a vet. And he gave her the idea of having the baskets be um, to, to figure. So like my uncle is a vet and I need to get a picture of him and then ask him what he likes. And then I will sponsor a basket and buy the things for the basket that he likes to do. Um, then there'll be a basket for like um, Cheryl's husband is a vet. And so Cheryl's gonna get a husband, a picture of her husband and then figure out what he likes and then sponsor a basket. And so we have a lot of people on the team or anybody in the community who wants to sponsor a basket um, with regards to what this vet likes and then we'll get a picture and put it so it's like commemorating um, those that have served. So this um, October it's gonna be for the Wounded Warrior and I will have more details as we get closer. Uh, that is actually the first Saturday in October. Uh, so it's a little ways away. I think, what are we in? May, May, June, July, August, like four months or five months away. So as we get closer, we'll get more details on that. You guys, I'm freezing. <laughs> I don't know, I'm like, I'm genuinely starting to shiver. It's really cold in here, you guys. Um, it's snowed here. It's like a combination of raining and snowing right now. Uh, the fireplace is going in the house, which is super warm. But out here with nobody in here, I turned the in-floor heat off and it's freezing. <laughs> so I'm a little shivery. Um, so so that was good. But when I went in at 10 o'clock on Saturday to go check, I, I went to go cut some paper for one of my helpers to do embossing. I went to the bathroom and I looked around my toilet. And I'm like, oh, why is my toilet leaking? What's happening? And I didn't think I should have investigated more, but I was in a hurry so I just cleaned it up, right? Cleaned up around the where the wet was coming out. And what about the MS benefit? And so then in the evening, we were heading to Madison to go have dinner with a friend and some friends uh, for a friend's birthday. And went downstairs to get a cooler to put some drinks in. And in the basement, I looked and I'm like, oh my goodness, there's this puddle on the floor in the basement. And then I looked up and I'm like, oh my gosh, the water is dripping from the pipes coming down. And I'm like, we don't need this right now. We have to leave so we are not late. <laughs> Isn't that how it always works, right? So, so needless to say, the seals in the toilet cracked. Uh, must have had too much pressure on it um, from leaning or something. Something happened and then the, the, the seals cracked. And so Tyler said, let's just turn off the water, flush it one last time, clean it all up, put the fans up and we let it go. And like, and it just aired out. And then went to Menards and got a kit. It's like $8 to buy the seals. And thank goodness, Tyler is so handy. Uh, he was able to fix the seals and the toilet was back in order. But I'll tell you when, you know, there's lucky two other bathrooms or two toilets in the, in the establishment, in the house, right? <laughs> one out like for the ladies to use out here for when I have classes and one upstairs, but it's instinct to go to where you normally go to the bathroom. So we both walked in there, went to go and like, oh, there's a good thing we put a sign on it that says do not use. <laughs> so yeah, so needless to say, we got to the birthday dinner late, but our friends ordered food for us and it literally arrived a minute before we sat down, which was like at 8.30 on Saturday night. So we had, uh, we got there, it was good. We hung out down there and then we had some other friends that we hung out with yesterday afternoon that we haven't seen for about a month and a half that just had a baby. The baby's about three months old now. So we haven't seen them actually since the baby was born, um, February 4th or so. Then that's all of February, March and April. Three months have passed. It's just amazing how fast this last three months have flat passed. So, but that's everything in a nutshell, you guys. And this morning I've been sitting at the computer since about nine o'clock, um, responding to people's emails because it has been crazy good busy since last week, Monday. So I'm working my way, digging through the email pile. <laughs> so um, so if you've sent me an email since Monday of last week, don't hesitate. I have gotten it. I think I probably got through, I'm back to Saturday now. So I've gotten, you know, Sunday, Monday, and Saturday all under, under you know, working on. And I think I'm back to Friday and I'll get back to Monday. So I kind of work backwards in order and I should probably work from the front forward, but I usually work backwards in my email. So that's all of, of that in a nutshell. <laughs> so, um, so we are going to be doing the boxes today and we are doing mini cards. And so my plan for you guys is to show you what we're doing with the card stock. 
Um, I sent everybody cardstock, which is probably like, you're probably thinking, wow, what am I gonna do with all this cardstock? This is not what I signed up for, but all of this cardstock is gonna be um, cut up and scored and made into these beautiful boxes. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. So um, I was able, in the middle of the MS benefit, I wrote the tutorial on Saturday afternoon while we had about eight people here. Um, and then I had it proofread. So Karen proofread it on Saturday. And then I was able to email it out to everybody yesterday. Um, in between getting home and leaving again, um, I said, Tyler, I need 20 minutes to sit here and do this. And so he was very patient and he waited and I got it out to everybody. Um, and in the interim, um, with sending out the class kits to everybody, I did realize that people who I shipped the kits to last week, I forgot to put the one and a half sheets of white cardstock in. So I did, thanks for liking and sharing, um, Angela, I appreciate it. So I did email everybody after I sent the tutorial, I sent a follow-up email to two groups of people. One group of people that I shipped them out last week, they got their package without the sheet and a half of white cardstock. And I wrote that in the email that if anybody wants me to cut up the mats, the 16, 16 mats that are two and three quarter by two and three quarter, I will gladly do that. Or I could put them into other mats um, if you've already cut your own. Um, hi, Bonnie Kemen. Uh, and the other option was, hey, maybe you have white cardstock that you're good just um, supplying your own white start, white cardstock for this class. I, I, it's very rare that it wasn't written on the recipe card. And with getting ready for the MS benefit last week, I didn't think twice to look inside the boxes and be like, okay, well, we need some white card sock to put in the inside mats. So I did remember the designer paper, got the little envelopes, got the ribbon, got the embellishments and got all the other card sock colors, but it was just the white. So then there were some people that I had to order ribbon. This window pane checked ribbon is part of this class. And I ordered um, about eight rolls last week, Monday and I thought I put two day shipping on the order and apparently it got to be Wednesday at four o'clock. The UPS guy went around and did not stop. And it dawned on me when I looked at my order that I never did two day shipping. I usually do two day shipping because of how backed up they are. Well, so there's a little small group, I think four people that I decided, okay, I'm gonna hold these four and the box is arriving today. And those four people got a different email. Now you guys, Got your, you're gonna get your shipment a little bit later. You're like you don't have it for class right now, but you're, I did stick two sheets of white cardstock in your, your kits so that you guys at least will have the white cardstock, but it'll be a little bit later. And those four people I reached out to and they're all good with it. So just so you know, there was a little bit, it was, it was a weird class. I will tell you this, this was a hard class to wrap my head around. <laughs> there was no die cutting. There was no embossing. It was setting cardstock and it just, it's all good. We're 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 there. We're gonna get we're gonna get through it. <laughs> it just was really odd for me, and I think that's why the white paper got missed. And and then uh, the two day shipping, you guys, they are backed up. I looked at one of my orders that I placed on April nineteenth, and it's still in a picking status. And so that is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're on the twelfth day for that one, so they are backed up a little bit. Um, and yeah, most people were good with no no whites. Nobody has told. So I think out of all the people that are missing the white people, it might be like 12 people. Nobody has said to me, please send me white paper. And I'd be happy to, so don't get me wrong. I would love to, but everybody's like, yeah, I got white paper. I'm good to go. We're good. So I appreciate that, you guys. I try not to miss things and I feel bad. And I do feel really bad when I miss things. I generally try to be on point with absolutely everything. And it just shows you that I am human. I don't always have everything on spot, on point. <laughs> I try, but I am human. So, and you guys, this is what I love about our community is that we are all patient, easygoing, and we don't get bent out of shape about things. Like that is amazing to me. Um, I love that and I appreciate that. You guys, I am that way with you and you're that way with me and it's a give and take. And I, I'm absolutely I'm amazed by that. So, um, we always will make anything right if we need to, um, or better. <laughs> so, all right. So we're going to do the shout out for the roll call. Um, we have a class of 31 people and I have um, accommodations for at least a handful more of people. So if you're watching this video right now and you're like, oh man, I wish I would have this paper and the embellishments and the ribbon and the tutorial um, to do this class. Um, the video is always out there for anybody to watch, but if you want the actual class class, you guys, I have 
the ability to do about five to six more of these. So um, just reach out to me at any point in the next um, day or two or week and let me know that you're interested in it. I still also do have, I believe, three or four left of the Favorite Flowers Stamp a Stack of Cards class that we did back in April. I think it was April 19th um, in the afternoon. Uh, and that's four fun folds and times four cards is 16 cards. So that one was a fun one too, because huh? it was fun folds. So just know I have both of these classes left. Um, so roll call. Um, oh, Debbie didn't read it, but she's all good. Yay. Hi, Car Car Carla. It looked like Korea, but the, the I is, the L is, it's an L. <laughs> Hi, Carla. Hi, Suzanne Neal. Hi, Michelle Davis from Amro. Whoop, whoop. All right. So we have Ruth, you're first on my list. Ruth Nicholson, Ramona Culp, Sherry Everett, Sue Spigner, Annette Rollin, Karen Woods, Helen Chase, Mary Lemke, Pat Thomas, Gail Kane, Jill Butzine, Francis Rodriguez, Hildenel Vilchez, Lynn Beasley, Debbie Gast, Sarah Mitchell, Leslie McMinn, Susan Warmly, Susan Bellamy, Michelle Dadson, Sandy Wicklander, Shirley Malarkey, Anne Bellinger, Feline Mays, Suzanne Neal, Vicki Rodriguez, Jeannie Parker, Lori Baxter, Tammy Steckling, Carol Donovan, and Tracy Gruby. Whoop, whoop. Okay. And again, if anybody else is interested, in, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I think you set the example and mood, which helps all to stay patient. <laughs> Plus, we know you do a lot for us. Thank you, Angela. Um, I appreciate hearing that. Um, I do get notes from people in cards that tell me how much I am appreciated. And sometimes they almost bring me to tears <laughs> because I do do a lot. And I realize and I recognize I do a lot, but it's all because I love to do it. And I love bringing joy and creativity to everybody. And sometimes it does wear me thin. And I noticed that this week, um, this weekend, I was like, I left for this party and I was like so mentally exhausted that I didn't know what to do. I was ready to like, I just need to take a nap. So Tyler's like, just rest your eyes in the car for 15 minutes before we get there. And, um, and then that helped. <laughs> but I was like, get, you know, from going from the benefit to this, to this, to this, to this, it's like, it does. And and I do appreciate when people tell me they appreciate it because it makes me feel good about doing it and continuing to do it um, to help you guys. So um, it's fun. Like this is fun for me. Like I never think in my head that this is work, which is crazy and because it is work. Um, but it's always to me um, a blessing that I get to do this. I get to do all the things that I love to do in one bit. Like I get to run this as a business and I love every aspect of it. Um, the, from the creating to the sharing to the cutting paper at three in the morning sometimes um, to folding and like, um, like I should say, scoring everything uh, to cutting the little embellishments. It's all fun for me. I enjoy this a lot. And so that's why it never feels like work, but I also have to remember that <laughs> I have to not always do it too. <laughs> so, all right. So, Okay, so you guys, there should be an email that you have with a tutorial in it. And um, I'm actually going to pull it up as well so that we can look at it together as a group because it has measurements on it, which are important uh, because we want to make sure we cut everything correctly. Um, my advice for you guys is to, what is the saying? <laughs> Thank you, Francis. The saying is measure twice, cut once, right? Okay. Sometimes I even measure it three times just to make sure that I don't cut it wrong. Um, the good thing is that if you do cut it bad, there's just paper, Naughty Nancy. And this is, this, this holds true from Naughty Nancy, right? She would always say, girl, it's just paper. Like, and then I would add on to it. Yep. They make more of it every day. So it's not worth getting our undies in a bundle about if we mess something up. It's really funny because Cheryl Taylor's here all week. She's the one that flew up from Florida and has helped with the benefit. Hi, Becky Roar. And she worked on the last ink. So I had one ink, paper, scissors left from like last week. And she got it. She got the last one. And she sat here and worked on her cards on Friday. And she accidentally glued something wrong. And it was perfectly fine. And it always works out. You 
who was it that said it last week? Oh, is it Michelle Dadson? It was somebody that said, there are no mistakes. They are just creative differences, right? So it doesn't have to always be exactly like what the sample looks like. And we're good with that, right? We just make it um, and different and we improvise. So I am going to pull up my PDF here, if I can, <laughs> and see if I am able to open this. Let's find here. So I have to go and it goes to my downloads. So I'm just going to go pull out of the downloads if I can find it. And if worst case scenario, I'm going to pull up my laptop here and see if I pull it up on there. And I might just do that so that I have it that way. Because then I don't have to be looking at my phone while I'm watching for your comments. Uh, oh, who is Naughty Nancy? Oh, Debbie Gass. So you came in at the tail end of... You, so, so Naughty Nancy is probably like the catalyst um, in my... where I've come today. I started having classes back in 2016 and her name is Nancy Stormer and she and all of us referred to her as Naughty Nancy because she sure knew how to make anybody blush um, with her remarks and her comments. And I started doing some classes at the Senior Center here in Fond du Lac and I had Naughty Nancy was the only one that signed up <laughs> and she never left my side after that. It was back in September of 2016. She was the only one that attended and I always had the mentality and I still do have the mentality that even if one person or two people sign up, I don't cancel classes because that one person or those two people have been looking forward to this for how long and I don't want to ruin um, that experience for somebody by canceling. I do have people that understand that if they are the only one, they don't want to be the only one and they're good with getting kits too. And that's a different scenario, right? But I always look at it that I want to check with those people first and say, what, what, let, let's have class if it's just you. So Naughty Nancy um, was the first person that was like major customer. And then she became a team member. She joined the Be Happy Stampers. She was the first person to promote to Silver. And then she, I don't know if it might be Silver. I think she was the first one to promote to Silver on my team. And then she was the first person to promote to Silver Elite on my team, which helped me promote to, to Gold. Uh, and she just, I always uh, put new customers next to her because she was so easygoing and um, she helps people, right? So Naughty Nancy passed away in um, November of this past year. Uh, we went to Indianapolis. I took a bus of 60, oh, 52 women, 58. How many fit on a bus? 55. There was two seats open. So we took 54 people to Indianapolis for on stage. And we didn't know it, but she had had a heart attack two days before we left. Um, so we we're like uh, November 9th or 7th or so. She had a heart attack. She didn't know it either. She knew she wasn't feeling quite right, but um, she got on the bus <laughs> without her teeth. <laughs> her husband had to run over really quick and bring her teeth, right? Otherwise, she had no teeth. Um, <laughs> so, but she was still in smiling and like ready to go, right? And so we just knew something was off with her. And um, it was it was hard. Um, but we, we made sure she was taken care of th throughout the whole trip. And then when we came back, she went into the hospital, actually, we got back on Sunday and she went back um, into the hospital on Monday or Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday, like a few days after. And she um, passed away two weeks later. Um, and so, so that's who naughty Nancy is. She's very special and near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, she played a big um, role in my life in helping me get to where I am with being able to be with you guys, right? She pushed a lot. Uh, she was very supportive. She was an outside inventory warehouse too. Like if I needed this ribbon or this paper for um, kidding up a class, <laughs> Naughty was my outside inventory warehouse because <laughs> um, she had it all <laughs> and then some. So yeah. So so yeah, so it's been really, it's it's crazy here to think it's only been since November that she's not even six months. And so she left a big hole in a lot of our hearts, but it's so funny because she's not really gone. She's still with us and she... Um, She's just here always. We just say, oh, well, that was Nancy and Nancy's, you know, so yeah. So you know, the people that go before us, they never really go um, or leave our side. They are still here. And if we need them, we still talk to them and we still uh, tease with them. And we always say if something's missing, oh, naughty Nancy just moved it or <laughs> she hit it on us. So, so yes. So that's who naughty Nancy is. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm not going to apologize, you guys. That was a good question. And so we talk about naughty Nancy a lot. And for those that are new to me, in the last few months, you probably hear me reference or refer to Naughty Nancy, but you don't know who she is and why she was so special. And so she is a special lady. Um, so 
She sure is, Hildy. You know it. Um, you guys, can you tell I'm a little emotional today? <laughs> I feel like I was totally Tyler. I'm like, I'm really emotional right now. And I know it's not that time of a month, you guys, right? But like, I think I'm just overwhelmed with where I'm at with all of the things. <laughs> and we're going into a new catalog. And there's the product shares. And there's the catalog. Um, bind, not the binding. Um the DSP sampler and there's just a lot and with leaving for the trip in a couple weeks it's like woof <laughs> there's a lot to do you guys and so um, at, um yeah all good though not complaining at all so I was gonna get my computer to get the tutorial so give me one second while I get that and um I'm gonna pull up the tutorial on my computer so that I can look at it that way so that I don't have to uh <laughs> have to have it up on my phone and while I'm watching for your comments. And then we're gonna start cutting, you guys, I, don't, I honestly don't know, like Cheryl was just here and she's like, well, how long do you think your class is gonna take? And I'm like, honestly, I have no clue. Um, <laughs> I was thinking like, not more than two hours. You know, like we usually keep classes to two hours. That seems always like a good length of time. <clears throat> and for anybody that's watching for the first time, like you can always, or if you're taking this class and you need to do other things, just know that the replay will always live on forever for this class. It, it like as long as YouTube lets us, we have our our um, we have our replays. And so if anybody ever needs to get going, you can always pull back the replay whenever it works. So, um, so we have here a tutorial which has measurements, and I include. It was weird writing this tutorial too because it was like there aren't four cards, there aren't three cards. It's boxes and it's cards, <laughs> and there's going to be mixing and matching um, for the um, the paper, the cardstock, and um, I have heard you talk about her and had oh and Debbie absolutely I'm glad you did ask we need to talk about Nancy and we need to remember her and um, honor her right so and she will bring joy to other people's lives even though she's not here anymore through all of us. And her, that her whole mentality of just relax, it's paper. Like she changed so many people's lives when you get like, it has to be this way. It has to be this way. It's like, no, it doesn't. It can be your way. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So these will um, dry up you guys um, as we keep going. I know they will. So I have another special lady that is part of our community and her name is Gail Kane. And she's been by my side too, probably since 2016. I met her through the senior center as well, about the same time that I met Naughty Nancy. And Gail is not, she doesn't have internet. She doesn't have an email address. <laughs> Gail's not technologically inclined. Um, and so she, what I do for her with this class, she always wants to do all these classes, but she doesn't have the means to like print off the tutorial. So what I do is, sorry guys, that came out more than what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> sorry. Um, so Gail lets me keep her class and I help by helping her get the cardstock cut. I use her sample. I did it the last couple of times now and she is always 100% happy with it. It helps me out because then I have her class that I can use as the sample. So I'm gonna be actually working with Gail's kit today um, and getting everything kind of prepped with her, but at the same time, showing you guys how to do it. So hi, Judy, Emil. You just missed um, our, um, our um, um, reminding and honoring um, Naughty Nancy. So Judy, you're gonna have to go back and watch um, from the beginning. So our box is here, you guys. So let's just drop down and show you guys what we're gonna be making today. So we are gonna be making four boxes. I'm actually only gonna make one. And then I'm gonna let Gail make the other three, just like you guys too. Well, let's make one together so you know how to do it. Um, but we're gonna get the cardstock cut for all of them so you know how to use the cardstock. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get you guys prepped to make the 14, there's actually 16 mini cards. And you got a whole pack of envelopes. So this pack of envelopes actually has 40 and we're only using 16. So you guys have extra little mini envelopes in case you really like the idea of the mini envelope that you have or the mini card, you can make more little mini cards. Um, so we're going to make, we're going to cut the cardstock and the GSP for all 16 as a group. And then what we'll do is we'll make the four. There's basically two styles. There's a style that looks like this with um, just a sentiment here. And then there's the other style, and one's in orange and one's in purple. And the other one is using the designer paper for the flowers and then um, putting some ribbon behind it. So the stamps that I did use are called Hello um, Ladybug, and that's where the hello comes from. 
Oh, Sandy, your package arrived. That's awesome. So that means it went out on Friday. Yours got mailed Friday afternoon. It arrived on Monday. So you took two days for shipping. That's great. Um, oh, Dawn, you're right. Never apologize for remembering someone who you care about. That's how they stay alive in our memories. Yes. Yes. And I wasn't apologizing for remembering them. I was apologizing because I got so sappy. <laughs> so, and I felt bad crying. And you know what, you guys, it's okay, right? You have to, my mom always says you have to cry and get it out if that's what you're feeling. And that is true. That's right. So I'm not apologizing for even crying. So all good. I am, I am overly emotional though. <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> so, all right. It's just been a busy, good week. So we're gonna cut for all 16 and we're gonna make four and like a complete set. And then what you guys will be left for to work on later is the other set of three. All right, so that's what we got planned for you. You have in your kit, if you got it from me, you have a pack of the iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. You also have that pack of um, three by three envelopes and the roll of the window pane check ribbon. I am very surprised. I had never used the window pane checked ribbon except for in one hedgehog card last year. So it was time to bring this and it was perfect. I think it was actually Chris's idea that thought, she thought, oh, let's use this one for these cards because we haven't really featured it much. All right, what else you have in your kit um, would be cardstock. Again, we talked about this a little bit earlier about how if your package got mailed to you last week and you're watching the replay, I did. Uh, forget to put in the white cardstock and you're welcome to have me cut it and I'll mail it to you later. Um, or you can use your own um, white cardstock. Um, Feline got her package delivered on Saturday as well. Yay. And then the other option would be if, um, if you are getting yours mailed this week, which I have about a handful of you getting yours mailed this week, I did slip in some white paper. So you have in here four evening evergreen pieces of cardstock. You have one petal pink, <coughs> you have two Calypso Coral, and two Fresh Freesia. And yes, they are full sheets. There's nothing done to them whatsoever. They are not scored, they are not cut. And that is what we are gonna do right now as a group, is we're gonna cut them. Hi, Anna Carter. All right, and then basically I have here um, what the two mats look like that we need to make. Um, I'm gonna show you guys really quickly from my computer what this tutorial kind of looks like. So I included the boxes like that and I'll picture. And then we've got the measurements there, which I'm gonna work off of, and then the instructions. I also included pictures of these completed. And then here are the box, these guys. I took pictures of these so you can actually see them, how I have them cut with actual cardstock. And then I went into my Excel program and I created a template here for you that was marked every half inch. So every one of these little squares is a half inch, which makes it five and a half by five and a half. The dark purple is where you're gonna be cutting. And then also dark here, this this guy right here, they didn't turn out purple. Ah, uh, yes, let's pretend that these are purple, they need to get cut. And then we're scoring. And I'm gonna talk through all that. So don't feel like you have to remember that right now. Um, and then here are the four different cards that we're gonna be making. And I have the different measurements in here for them. So this, in case you guys have never seen a tutorial of what I do, that's how this one's gonna look. So I'm gonna be working off of the numbers and measurements here at the top. So, okay, you guys can also have yours pulled up as well. And we're gonna start cutting and scoring. So um, you cut your whole white while you were talking about Nancy. It, it is only paper. <laughs> You're right, Debbie. Perfect. Okay. Are you turning the volume down, Cheryl? Cheryl, can you turn the volume off? Cheryl's here working on a class. Thank you. The thing was, it wasn't plugged in, right? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so you guys, Cheryl's in here working on The Greatest Journey. And I'm so excited. She took my last Greatest Journey game night class. And <laughs> she didn't have the headset plugged in. So if you heard me talking in the background, that's why. Um, all right, so let's get back on here. So you guys have four sheets of Evening Evergreen. Let's start with that. Let's start with that. So each one of these sheets is going to make one box. And you're gonna have a little bit left over on the side and we're using that actually for your card, your mini, one of your mini cards. So, hi Melanie Foy. We are going to take each one of these greens and we're gonna cut off at five and a half on the eight and a half inch side. So let's do that first. So we're gonna do five and a half, leaving us 
three inches here. This is exactly what we need to make one of our mini cards. So we're gonna save this for later. And now what we're gonna do is turn this paper and we're gonna cut this at five and a half. All right, so the, that's the base and the lid. They are both, one is five and a half by five and a half and the other is five and a half by five and a half. So this is one box right here, but we have to make four boxes. So I would recommend doing always this short side first, <clears throat> which leaves you enough to do your mini card and then flip it this way and you're gonna do, so that's enough for another box. And then same thing, five and a half. I looked for the in color shimmer dots and they are gone from the website. Oh no, the in color shimmer dots are those, They the I think those are what we used for the in color retirement class maybe. And then again, flip this like that. And we have another box and lid right here. And then the last sheet. So each box needs a full sheet. And you're left over with this little three inch side, which we're gonna use six inches of this to make one of some of the mini cards. So we're gonna flip this around this way. And that's enough for our four boxes and our four lids. Okay, so let's pause from cutting and let's do a little scoring. All right, so let's just make a little room because we are going to, you guys, I have a hard time scoring with that scoring paper, that paper trimmer. I don't, I, I personally, I don't use it a lot because I like to use the scoreboard like this. So you guys, in case you're wondering, the scoreboard is from Stampin' Up. It is costing right now um, $30. When the new catalog launches tomorrow, it's $36. Um, so Anna said, thank you for explaining my classes and what's up in May. Can't wait to sign up. Awesome, Anna. I'm so excited for you to take some classes in May. Um, this scoring tool is available. I wanna just show it to you. It's right here, the scoring tool, and it is $30. If you go into the catalog that starts tomorrow, it's gonna be 36. So that's a $6 saving. So you guys, in case you wanna put another order in before the, basically before the new catalog launches, you like the white cost of paper is going up, ink pads are going up. So if there's anything you need and you wanna save a little money, today would still be a good day to place an order. And your order now, starting with May 1st, qualifies for classes that are in May or in June. So you could already look at June classes. I know I don't have anything made for June really that is free with an order, but um, it you could always get signed up for them <coughs> now. So what the first instruction says here, you guys on this right here, it says evening evergreen A and B. So I did the bottom is A and the top is B. So score one inch from each side on all four sides, then cut the cut per the diagram below. Okay, so what does that mean? <clears throat> so this paper is five and a half by five and a half. We want to score one inch from each side. <clears throat> and because I'm a right, I'm a righty, I hate kind of going across like this. So I will do one inch at the four and a half inch side because that's five and a half minus one is four and a half. So <clears throat> the bases and the lids are the same. All of them need to get scored one inch from the edge. I mean, I could go over here and do it here too, but I just like to keep, I don't know, I have good grasp on it right here. Want to make these boxes for mothers? Okay, so Feline, I am so happy to hear that that's what you're doing. Um, you're working on your craft roulette card and then you're going to work on these for Mother's Day gifts. That's awesome. So I originally had this class on the docket for May 10th, and I had the perfect pomegranate class for today. When I looked at when Mother's Day was, and the thought that these could make great Mother's Day gifts for the, the ladies in your life, I <clears throat> I thought, wow, let's we need to switch the day and the time, or like, like the day. So I switched around perfect pomegranate is the 10th now, and then this became today so that it would give you guys this week to definitely get them done. I know Mother's Day isn't for two weeks. It's like two weeks from yesterday, 
but in case you need to mail them, um, then you have a little extra time by having this class today. So when we think about mothers in our life, you kind of think, well, my mother, right? And your mother may or may not be with us at this moment, <clears throat> which is, it still doesn't mean that you can't give other mothers in your life a gift, right? So you might have a daughter who is a mother. You might have a niece who is a mother. You might have a friend who's a mother, right? You might know somebody who's a mother and just because they are not your actual mother doesn't mean that you can't give another lady in your life a Mother's Day gift. And so these would be great gifts for any woman, um, how florally and pretty they are. And besides Mother's Day, you could also do a birthday gift, right? To somebody who needs a little gift. That's what, what I thought, well, it's four too many for this. And we, I thought, no, four is a good number because usually when we do cards, we're doing four. And because they're mini cards, <clears throat> they don't use as much cardstock. So just think about all the different ways you could use these boxes as gifts. And just think this could also be non-floral related too. If you have other designer paper, like the core and the shell of these boxes can be used for any theme. Um, hi, Penny Powell. I missed you live so often lately up to my elbows and cats and <laughs> three batches of new kittens. Oh man. Well, you're here now and I'm glad you said hi. <clears throat> I bet Cheryl Taylor says hi back. She's here with me right now, Penny. <laughs> All right. So you guys, this was the first step in this. It was scoring these on each side. Then it says to cut them per the diagram below. Well, let's pull in the diagram that I have. And so just to hold this here so you guys can see, this is the five and a half. And the diagram shows dark purple lines, except for this diagonal one. I apparently missed putting that as dark purple. Um, but what we're going to do is we cut off these corners. Um, so this one's actually, let's start with the, the, this is the base. Let's start with this one. Hi, Lynn Hunt phones catching you from Southern New Jersey. Yay. This one is actually easier. So let's divide these into four and four because we don't want to mess up and do an extra one. So we're going to do four with that one and four with this one. So you could pull back your trimmer for this one now, um, if you want and work with this for cutting. We are going to just nip off all of the corners at an angle like this. And so what I'm gonna do is look for the score line like this. And we're just going to nip off these little corners. Now, if you feel inclined to want to make something with these little corners, you can definitely do that. <clears throat> I'm at the notion that they're a little bit small for me to do anything with, so I probably won't. You could actually use them to decorate like the insides of the white cardstock. <laughs> okay, so here, let's keep going. So this is where you're going to go all the way around and keep nipping off. I guess if you feel inclined that this is a little bit too much, you could always take your scissors. Hi, Sue, Sue Spagner. You could always take your scissors. As long as you're okay cutting in a straight line, you could definitely do that as well. So whatever you find is more comfortable and easy for you, like definitely go that route. So as, if you can cut in a straight line, and go corner to corner, like, or from score line to score line. For me, this sum might be just a little bit easier than lifting up my scoring thing and popping it in there and doing that each time. If you're not a straight cutter, -er, then you might go back to using the paper trimmer. Um, also too, if you have that little baby trimmer that Stampin' Up! has, I know some of you were able to snatch this up when it was available, you could also, do like a guillotine type thing to cut off these little corners. Again, we're just nipping off the corners on all four of these. All right, so let's go like this. And then once we have these done, we'll go through the next step of what we need to do to these bases. All right, so I got two left. That one and that one. So the thing is, I always check to make sure if I move, I double check them. Because I, I line up the first one, then I line up the second one, and then I go back. It's like right, left, right, right? When you're crossing the road, left, right, left. Like <laughs> look both ways and then again the other way. <clears throat> so those are all the little corners that are nipped off. And what we're going to do now is we need to trim down and like basically on the two, like the top and the bottom, 
you know, it's not left and right. I mean, if you do hold this left and right, it could be left and right. But <clears throat> on the opposite sides, we're going to just take your scissors and we're going to cut down. If you need to use your paper trimmer, if you need to, go for it. Otherwise, I'm just going to use my scissors here. Again, this is one side. Now you want to make sure you get to the opposite side. And you're going to snip in on all of those. And let's see here. You know, it might be easier too. Let's just try this one. We're going to bone fold this one before we go for it. Because okay. then they'll stay together. Okay, so I'm just going to take my bone folder and going around and burnishing these edges. Let's see if that helps. Because I still have to burnish that first one. This way they're done already. Again, stay on one side and then flip it around and get to the other side just like this. Okay, so that one's good. I'm going to bone fold this one. <clears throat> oh, Sue, I saw your comment that you were late. It is no problem, you guys. Whenever we do a live class like this, you can be as late as you want because the replay is always here for you whenever it is convenient for you. <clears throat> All right, so there's, the, we got two of them done. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of this as well for the scoring. So has anybody made a box like this before? I definitely, so I worked on this with Carissa. She had seen it somewhere on Pinterest, but it was bigger. And what we had to do is recalculate the numbers to make it fit the three by threes. We shrunk the box down and made it so that it was available to do with the, the size that we wanted for our note cards on the inside. All right, so again, now on this one, and then flip it over to the opposite side, and let's snip all those. So we've got three done, and now we're gonna do the last one. Don't forget to flip it over I'm kind of cutting, when it comes to these score, their score lines, I'm trying to cut right onto the inside of the score line so that, that that bumpy raised part gets glued on the inside is what I'm doing. So these bases are all ready to go. I'm not gonna do anything with these three. I'm gonna leave them ready on a pile for Gail. And we're gonna save this one here because that's one we're gonna actually put together. So then we're gonna work on this one. Now this one is a little bit harder. Now, this looks like a diamond to me, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like a diamond, like, you know, a big diamond on your hand. So this one's a little bit different in the sense that this section is a little bit different, but the top, those corners still get nipped off and cut down like that. So let's, let's bone fold all of these just because it'll help us. Uh, let's see here. Yep, we can bone fold. <laughs> I was thinking maybe it would be easier not to, but we are going to, well, let's just practice on this one first one. So it doesn't matter. It's all the same right now. Everything's the same. Hi, Luann. First time viewer from Griffin, Georgia. Welcome. I'm glad you're able to watch. So the, the corner gets nipped, right? So let's nip off the corner and the corner, just like we did on the other ones. And then this is still the same. We're gonna snip down and then snip down, okay? Sometimes you can miter, like, like take that little wedge out because then it glues a little bit better. So we'll, we'll, when we go to glue, we'll see if we need to go back and miter them. But cutting out that little wedge will help us so that it doesn't get caught up in the crease here. So, so far, that's, that's the same as the other one. Now what happens is we need to notch out this square here this square here, and then we need to cut from here up to there. So easy step first is to let's cut the square out of here. All right, do it the same on the other side, just like that. We'll do the one, and then we will go and do all three of them. All right, so now though, pull out your trimmer, whichever one you wanna use, and you need to trim from here to here, right? So this is what we're cutting off right here. We're cutting off this rectangle. 
not rectangle, triangle. <laughs> geometry. I did like geometry in school. So this, from this corner to here. Now, I will caution if you use a guillotine like this, you might risk cutting this off. So if you hold that up so that that's not in the way, that would probably be smart. I'm going to take from that corner to here and trim that little guy off. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna flip it over and do that. That's what we're trying to do. Now this is our cover. And what happens is once we glue this together like that, this back flap gets glued in here. Could either go on the back like that or it can go on the inside, but then this becomes the lid. So again, it opens like that. So we officially have one box ready to um, adhere together, but I told you we're gonna cut everything together as a group today. So we're gonna do these other three pieces. Now to show you it three times, thanks for liking and sharing Judy Immel. Um, Judy Immel, you were one of our lucky winners from the benefit. So your prize is on the counter in the mudroom. So we're going to cut these two. Oh, I liked to do the bow, the burnishing first. Yeah, so let's, so hopefully you guys are gonna see the lid and the cover, or the lid and the bottom four different times. So by the fourth time, hopefully you will know exactly what to do. So Angela Knutson, I don't know if you're still watching. I, you are also a winner. You won the diamond dot thing, <laughs> the diamond dot and the candle basket. I don't remember what was on the diamond dot. That's why I said thing. I don't remember what was the decoration. Oh, it might've been gnomes, I think. All right, so you guys, I just went through. I burnished all of them. That's what was my main task I wanted to do. Now we're gonna go back to this one. So we've got the corners nipped off. And now what we're gonna do is kind of nip down in here and I am gonna miter that just a hair. And then cut straight down. I'm staying on the inside of the score line and then nipping. So there's that one. And I'll do this one next. So corner nipped off like that. Cut just on the score line, like right. So you're kind of cutting off that score line. Let's cut the corner off that and something like that okay we have one more now same concept we're going to cut these little corners off cutting just on the score line so it gets kind of wedged out of here and something like that so now we have all of oh haha i gotta cut the little corner off though hang on ahead of myself there okay so we have all of those tops done now we still have to do the bottoms the bottoms again were let's cut off the square so we're notching that out and that one we'll come back and use the guillotine for the diagonal one this and then that one one more you guys is everybody doing okay so far <laughs> hopefully this isn't too complicated I'm gonna just cut a little bit more of that off and then this little corner gets cut off Okay, so far so good. Now I'm gonna switch over to my little guillotine. I'm gonna fold this up so I don't risk cutting it off. And I'm gonna go from that corner over to this corner. And then I'm gonna flip this over and do the same thing. All right, so far there's another one. So we'll put that on that pile. Okay, Kimberly says thumbs up. Yay. Okay. So we're 
cutting that one off. And then we're going to cut that one off. And then the fourth one. Now this time, hopefully, you guys have it down pat. There's that one. And that one. All right. So what we've just accomplished is the this is four bases and four lids for our boxes. Okay. So I'm going to save one of these out. <laughs> and Van Mulligan just messaged me and I had to read it. She won the scary doll thing. <laughs> from the raffle and so she said it needed a home and so so Ann Van Willigan is the one who won the scary doll um raffle basket <clears throat> so for right now you guys I don't want to make all four boxes I just want to make one with you for sure so um that is the plan so I'm going to save this over um what we can do is we'll take a moment here I think let's glue it together so now you guys will see how to glue it ultimately each one of these little tabs needs to come in and you're going to glue the tabs to the side of the box. The main thing I wanna say is make sure you get them nice and like square, like 90 degree angles. Um, you could use liquid glue, you could use anything that's more permanent in nature for a glue. And before I do it, I'm thinking, and this is one I didn't miter, so I'm going to like miter these little, like take the little wedge out so that that's not in the way. So I'm just cutting slightly at an angle to get that Humpty hump from the score line out of the way. Like that. And then one more over here. All right. So I got those little wedgies out. And you can see it's right here. It's kind of just hanging there. That's what we just kind of took out. All right. Then what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue. You want to be careful. If you have a hard time with liquid glue because it oozes all over, just don't use so much. And don't keep it so close to the edge, right? You can see I'm hardly putting a little. This is like a craft glue, this white Tombow. Um, I'm going to do one side here. Just like that. I'm going to try to make sure I have it nice and flush. And then this guy. Make sure you have that nice and flush. And then the heat from your fingers will help set it. I'm gonna put this one. I'm gonna take sneak him in though. Tear and tape would work as well. You need something that is uh, very secure with adhesive, like very um, strong, so that it stays together. All right, <laughs> you guys, this is our little baby box, right? So those little corners are on the inside, glued in, and you have it nice 90 degree angles around the edge here. Okay, now for the lid. Um, I think that we might, okay. So these, same thing, these little tabs need to go in like that. So let's get a little bit of glue on them. A little more. And then a little bit over here. So if you're on my team, um, usually for a stamp -a stack I do be happy mem be happy stampers team pricing for stamp -a stacks because then you guys could supply your own um, paper I uh, know paper designer series paper embellishments and ribbon well I didn't really do a team option price on this one because as long as you had the full sheets of cardstock that you had in your own supply you could always get the tutorial from the be happy stampers Facebook page because I always provide Every online class I do, I provide tutorials to my team as a gift to my team. And so if you're on my team, you could just pull up the tutorial and make these boxes then using your own cardstock and your own um, embellishments, ribbon, whatever you want to use. So that's why there was no team pricing for this option, for this class. All right, so now you have two options. Do you want to glue this to the back side or you could in essence also put it on the inside? It's a little bit better of a fit if you put it right on the back side. And we're going to put some DSP around here. So now what happens is this. Once you have it glued on there, we'll just sneak over the top. Sneaky, sneaky. All right. So let's put a little bit of glue on this flap. We're going to glue that to the back side. 
I think we're gonna go just like this. Again, make sure that shuts over the top. I would shut it and then, <clears throat> and then hold it while it's shut in place. Okay, so I've got the front here shut. It doesn't quite hit the bottom here, but that's okay. And then this, it doesn't quite reach the back, but once we get our designer paper on there, you're gonna be fine. And I'm gonna rub that so that the heat from your finger will help that glue. And then that is our box. He wasn't so crazy, right? I think I overthought it. <laughs> it had been a while since we made these, so I was always wondering like, oh, how hard will this be when I redo it? But it was not hard at all. All right. I'm looking for some confirmation. You guys, again, whatever you want to do with these, you could use them for decorating the inside. It's your call. They're your, it's your extra little scraps. Um, but we've successfully just made the core shell, I guess, of the box. Now what we do is we are going to decorate it eventually, but we have to cut some more cardstock, right? So we've got our base and mats done. You guys should have the rest of these ready to go. As you're listening, you could always keep gluing these if you want to. But ultimately, what we did is we made two of the outsides of the boxes purple, and two of them we made the coral. And that is because of that sheet of paper in our designer series pack. So you guys, I do have extra, in case you tuned in a little bit late, I have extra of this class available, and it includes the pack of designer paper, which is from the um, celebration from last year. So we had in here, this one special sheet has four big flowers, and it has eight small flowers. And you have two sheets like this, right? So we designed this with only using one of these sheets versus using two of them. So knowing that, if you wanted to make four more boxes, you would just pull in your own cardstock. And if you wanted to make more little baby mini cards, you could always make more. Uh, this is what I'm gonna do for these. I like to rough cut these flowers out first so that they're not all on the sheet together. And then what we're gonna do is die cut them. Um, I'm just gonna, again, I'm making only four mini cards with you, and then the, I'll make the outside of one box so I can leave some of it for Gail to work on. But we'll get this because you guys will, like, this is what I would suggest doing too. Get these kind of trimmed apart. Rough cut is what I call it. And you can always do the fine cutting once you've got this done. So they're there. Uh, there's, I call these side flowers. <laughs> uh, you can use them however you see fit. You could use them, so here's a big one, small one, like on the inside of your car. You could always glue this near the edge and have that be a little focal image in the front or in the inside. Um, you also have some that are almost full size. You could figure out something to use with that. Um, you could always layer up more and have another one come out the back. So don't throw away those side flowers just because you think it's not a full flower. That would be a waste of the pretty paper. We're almost done here. A couple more to go. So this is, there's two sheets like this and you wanna kinda just separate them. I did bring my little boss around so that we can, we'll, we'll cut a few of them, but here's that. Okay, now this is extra for you to do with what you want later in life. <laughs> and I think what we're gonna do next is we're gonna cut, we're gonna cut our papers because we have more paper that needs to get cut. So in the tutorial, so we, we have here DSP outside the top mat is uh, three by three. Okay, so just double, I like to double check things, but because it's actually three and a quarter by three and a quarter. I told you the wrong thing. I have it right here. So I read the thing, wrong thing. So I've got the bottom outside mat, two freesia, two petal pink, three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then the DSP mats are three by three, which is a perfect size for designer paper. So what we're going to do is grab, we have two petal pinks and two freesias. So grab your trimmer back. And we need the petal pink sheet and a freesia sheet. And so these are three by three. Oh, Mary said her box turned out great, awesome. So you're gonna cut this um, at three inches on the 11 inch side. Don't cut it three inches, like I would cut it 
three inches on the 11 inch side first. And actually I just lied. It needs to be three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So we're gonna put this at three and a quarter because you need to save the rest of this for other things. And before I do that, let me just think about this for one moment. On the inside, there's no petal pink. There's one, nope, no petal pink. I just wanna see what we did for mini cards. I think we did one mini card in this box, which is a three by six, and we have one in this one. Okay, so the bases for the two mini cards are three by six and three by six. So when we cut this at three and a quarter by three and a quarter, we get our two outside mats here, and then we have our other mats are used, or our other bases are out of this. So we're good. So three and a quarter, by three and a quarter and three and a quarter. This is extra. We need this though, you guys. Don't throw that away. We need that. Look at those mad scores. <laughs> All right, so these are, we need these two, but then we also need some fresh freesia ones. So we're going to do again on the 11 inch side, do three and a quarter and then three and a quarter, and three and a quarter. So these are our, what again, these are, save that. These are the top mats for down right here. So three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So you've got those done. Then there's no other card stock on the outside of the boxes, but on the inside, we have all these mini cards and they are all three by six scored at three. There's four evening evergreens and you know why there are four evening evergreens? Because your edge of the paper here is three inches, and all we have to do is cut it to six, right? Save this, you're gonna need it for a mat, so you gotta do six, and six, and then two more of those. Okay, so that one also was at six, and then the last one is as well. Again, save these, they're mats for later. So these are four of the 16 bases that we're gonna need. We'll score them once we get um, all of them cut. Okay, so we just talked about that we have petal pink, that we need two bases for our petal pink that are three by six. Then, I feel like there's that's also used. So we have a couple of those and that. So I'm pretty sure that we, you guys are gonna have some paper left over. So I know that when you're done with your cardstock, you're gonna have a little bit left over. This is what I had left over from, from mine and that's okay. So we're gonna do three by six or what you guys could do is six by six, right? Right, so we'll take six. This is extra at the moment by six. I'm gonna show you a little trick. I'm gonna leave it as six by six now, only because I wanna show you that I'm gonna score this at three and then go cut it. Because leaving it whole, it's like less touching for when we score it later. All right, so then we also need, uh, there's more in here. So we've got our greens. Let's just pull these out real quick. So we've got a green, a purple. This one I still need to put together. We got two purples there. This one is a coral, two purples and a pink. And this is where you have a little bit of wiggle room. You guys, if you really love coral, you're gonna have some coral paper left over. Um, so you can make more coral. And if you, you have, you can make five cards in here. So this was two coral. This is two coral, a fresh freesia. So I've got three, I'm losing track, hang on. So this one's out. So we got fresh freesia, fresh freesia, so that's two. This is three, they're not all the same. Four, five. So we did five fresh freesias. So you know why we did five. <laughs> this, if we cut this at six inches by six inches, this is enough for two. Okay, we'll score that and then cut it in half. So that's enough for two and we said we needed five. Well, you have another sheet of freesia which I would recommend cutting it at six inches. So this is extra at the moment. And then we're gonna cut this at, 
well, here's why I want to, I'm going to cut it at nine. So I'm cutting off. Like I work where I don't like to have little scraps as much as possible. So I'm going to cut this at nine because three times three is nine, right? So this ultimately needs to get scored at three inches and then we're going to come back and cut it and cut it. So this is three, three, and three. This gives us three more. And then that gives us two. This is our five. Okay, we'll come back and cut that in a moment. Our coral. So the numbers, if this is overwhelming now, because you're like, I'll show it, it all makes sense as we pull it together. So there's a coral and then two corals is three, four, five. There's five corals. So from coral, all right, so I'm going to cut it at six here, right? Because that's how wide the base is, six inches. And then we're going to cut it at nine because three times three is nine. All right, so there's enough for three bases. And then we need two more. So I'm going to cut this at, what do I want to cut it at? I'll cut it at six. This is extra. By six. All right. We've used up all the colored cardstock then. Let's go and do our scoring and then we'll come back and trim this. So the reason I left these whole, because I want to show you guys, this is how I score paper. When I am scoring paper for you, I score the whole sheet and then cut it in half. So this needs to be scored at three. This one also needs to get scored at three. This one gets scored at three. This one is at three. And this one's at three. Okay, so that was a lot easier than picking up and touching each base separately. Now I come back here and I'm gonna turn it so my score is this way. And I'm gonna cut it at three. So this is two, then we're going to cut this at six inches, which is giving us three, and then three, which gives us, that was our three bases, but we need one more here, or I should say two more. You guys, all we're doing is cutting three by six and then scoring them at three. There's three. and three. One more yet, and then we'll have all of our little bases cut. Let's go through and see what we have. We have four green, and that's one for each card. So this is for each box gets a green one, and then each one got a coral one. Each one got a freesia one, and then what happens is you have four left. So one box is gonna get another coral, two boxes will get petal pink, and one box will get freesia. Now, again, this is what you have left. You could have done one more in coral, unless you have cardstock at home. Otherwise, none of these are gonna be quite wide enough to make another base. So this right here, we used these things to make our mats because some of these cards have mats on them as well. So this is what you have left that will work with momentarily. Let me just set it off to the side. And what, what I'm gonna do here though is I'm only making, I'm gonna make one set of cards with you. So I'm gonna line these up over here for Gail so that she'll have those in a moment. When it, so those are all of our bases. Now, the one thing that I didn't, we talked about this earlier about white paper. So the inside white mat, we might as well cut that as long as we we can. It's two and three quarters by two and three quarters. I love two and three quarters a lot because two and three quarters times four is 11. <laughs> and this is two and three quarters this way, you get three and then you get four that way. So you get 12 mats out of this one piece. So you can either cut it at 12 and three quarters or sorry, two and three quarters. I said that wrong, two and three quarters. Two and three quarters times two is five and a half. So I'm gonna just cut, cut this in half and then I'm gonna cut this now down to two and three quarters. 
and then flip these this way and cut two and three quarters, two and three quarters, and you're gonna have just a little slip. Now, this is the factory edge. I like to flip that factory edge over and keep that side, and then you only have two rough, or you, know, you only have a rough cut edge on that side. So there's three, but then we want, this fourth one makes for the set we're gonna work on here. And then you're going to do two and three quarters. I flipped it over and kept that factory cut edge. Yeah, that's right. All right, and then you have another, you have that other half. So let's pull that and cut that at two and three quarters. Ha, 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 almost cut that wrong. Two and three quarters. Flip that. So you guys are getting a lesson on paper cutting today. So here's that. I'm gonna flip it over and keep the factory edge. So we've got a set of four here. I can go with one set. And then flip this guy. And then this will give us another Flip it, keep the factory edge if that you are so inclined. Okay, so that's another set of four. We need one more set though. So you've got an option. If you have a full sheet of cardstock, if you cut it this way at two and three quarters, this is extra. The whole chunk is extra. And then you're gonna flip this this way. And you've got two and three quarters two and three quarters and two and three quarters. This last one should be two and three quarters because that makes 11. So you just cut your whites into just two and three quarters by two and three quarters. That is your mat for the inside. All right, now we're going to cut mats for the outside. So let's, well, I think it might be easiest if we just, so this one is the only one I didn't get put together. <laughs> Let's get this guy out of the way. Let's just pull out all the cards so I can show you the differences of how we did this. Again, now this is going to be completely how you want to create and decorate. But this one ultimately looks like that. That one is that one. We got a purple like that and this purple one. And then we've got the coral like that, a purple like that. See what I did here too, you guys? I switched them. I put the flower on one side and then I put it on the other side. And then you can figure out which side you like better. So there's that. And then we have here, this is that one, that one, that's that one, and then a green. And that's this one and this one. And it's a little different. The designer paper is slightly different. These two, these are the ones that all match. Okay, but they have different. So these are those oddball ones that you had two petal pinks, a coral and a purple. But this is one where we have four like this, four like that, and four like this. All right, so let's cut some extra cardstock. These all have a mat underneath where these have just DSP straight on the, the base. So this is the one where all of these have a green mat. So you're gonna have to go back. You guys had these four extra green pieces that were left over. So I'm gonna go to the tutorial really quick and see what I have referenced for a bottom mat. Can either be cardstock or DSP. It's two and seven ace by two and seven ace. So let's just double check my numbers. And that is just basically an eighth and, yeah, it's an eighth inch off each side. So what you can do is you're gonna take this and cut it at two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. All right, so there's, this is extra now. You can still make something pretty with that. So we got one and then I'm gonna do two and then flip this like that. So this is gonna be one that you can put on the for later pile. So you guys, when I'm cutting this, I'm cutting off my two and seven eighths this way first, and then this. If I cut two and seven eighths this way, I've just wasted this whole strip over here. So by cutting it on this long edge first, I think that makes a difference in wasting less paper. So 
So then here's that mat. And then one more, two and seven eighths. So these now are four extra green pieces. And you've got three mats and we're gonna use the other fourth mat for the set we're actually making right now. Okay, so then the rest of this is designer series paper. Except for, wait, let's do these really quick too. These are one and five eighths by one and five eighths. And there are four and three in petal pink. Let's just see here. There's five in freesia that are that size and three in petal pink. So if we go here, you have a little strip that you can do is one and five eighths. This was one of the extra little slips you had. So one and five eighths and you're gonna do, oop, it moved, hang on. One and five eighths. One and five eighths. And look at that, you guys, just like that. We use up a scrap. So this is extra. Put it wherever you have your extras. So these three are the three that would go for those. So let's just keep these together like that. Then we need freesia. And freesia, there's five of them. So grab that strip of paper like this. It should be just wide enough. This was like a leftover from what we just cut. And you need five. So one and five eighths. This gets a little bit repetitive, but that's because we're making four of each one. So one and five eighths. One and five eighths, that's three of them. One more. And look at this, you guys. Isn't that awesome? We got this little strip used up. That's, a, I'm gonna throw that away. So there, that's our fourth one for there. And now we have these four for this card right here. So we've got that done. Now we also have this little piece, which is one, what is it? It's two by one and a half. Right, so we need four of those. Okay, so you have this piece right here. You probably have this piece. So let's just see. You guys, this is exactly two inches. All right, that's perfect. So we're just gonna flip it this way. And we're gonna do one and a half. One and a half. One and a half. And it's gonna be good enough. That was perfect. There's our four pieces, you guys, that used up that strip of paper perfectly. Then we have our petal pink. This is all you really have left of petal pink. All you have this thing too. But we need to get two inches times one and a half, four times. So we're gonna cut it at two inches and we're gonna do six, okay? Because one and a half times four is six. So this is extra. And we're gonna go then four and a half, three, and then one and a half. Just like that. These are the four pieces. If you ever have paper that has a little nick on it from just how it was processed or manufactured, you just use that to the back. It's okay. So those are the four pieces from the top of those. All right, now let's cut the designer series paper. So all of these are gonna be the same, two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And then this one's gonna be a little bit different because it's a, a smaller one, it's matted differently. So we're gonna grab that and we also, while we're at it, this one piece is also used on the outside of the box. So let's start with that piece first, which is the coral-ish one. So that's our first piece. And the outside of the box is bigger. So I wanna cut that first. That is three by three, but we only need two, or unless you want to put some on the inside, you could always decorate more on the inside. But for now, I guess let's just, I'm not gonna worry about the inside. We're gonna do a three by three. And if you want, yeah, let's, we're just gonna cut this at three inches like that and then turn it. And we're gonna do six and then three. And this gives us our two three by threes. So this is for our outside the box mat like that. Okay, 
I'm going to set that with this pile right here because those are those two mats. All right? Then we're going to do, there's four here, and those are two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So I'm going to cut off the two and seven eighths, flip it, and do two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. All right, so that's two of them, but there are four. So you're gonna have to come back here and we're gonna cut at two and seven eighths. And we'll do at two and seven eighths. And two and seven eighths. So this is extra at the moment. I'm gonna just set it off to the side. So we have our four here that go with this pile right here. And now we're gonna do the purple. Purple. And the same thing happens with that one. We're going to get the top of the box done first because there's this top of the box here, which we just said that was three by three. So this is gonna act the exact same way. We're gonna cut it at three. And we're gonna get the two tops first. So I'm gonna to go to six inches. Hi, Carmen Sanders. I'm glad you got a second to hop on. And then three inches. So these are our two mats for the top here and here. And then back to the two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So we got that. And then this will give us two. Two and seven eighths. And two and seven eighths but we need two more yet, two scoops. So let's go back and grab off two more of them from this side, like that. Set that off to the side for the moment and turn this two and seven eighths, two and seven eighths. You guys, a lot of repetitive cutting here. So these mats go with this pack right here. Then we just have, let's see here, we have this one, which is the pretty purple flowers, which is actually the back side of this. So we just did this. So we had one little guy random here. So we can go ahead and cut that at two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So there's one, but now we need three more. So let's cut this here at two and seven eighths. and then flip it, and we do two and seven eighths, two and seven eighths, two and seven eighths. So those are our four that go with this bottom pile here. Okay, what's left then is that one. And that one is the prettiest of them all. I love that paper more than anyone in this pack, like any other paper in this pack. I love this one so much. <laughs> I just love the mixture of these colors. So now this is matting onto the Evening Evergreen, which was two and seven eighths. So then this now makes the designer paper two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And we need four of them. So we can cut this at two and three quarters. And then we'll flip it. We'll do two and three quarters two and three quarters, two and three quarters. And I want to save this because, ooh, there's purple right there. I think I'm gonna cut it like the way it was, two and three quarters, because the little label will go over that dark green section. So those are what mats onto those green. So we've just cut all of the little mini cards. What's left is what do you want to do with the rest of your box? Do you want to decorate it? Like in this case, I did the flowers on the sides and that, and I even put some on the inside. You, I, I guess if it were me, I'd go back and put one on the bottom here too. You could also put one on the top. Like, so you can decorate these as much or as little as you want from here on out. If you want to leave the sides green, you could. But I think for Gail, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, she loves purple, it's her favorite color, just like me. 
So I think what I'll do for Gail is I'll make the one box for her and we're gonna just put the four, it's actually five, you gotta cut five because it's one, two, three, four, five because that covers it up. So we're gonna cut these side strips just so you have an idea of what the measurement is. Um, um, it's in the tutorial, but I like to pull this out. Three and three eighths by seven eighths, I think, yes. So we're gonna cut five of those. And those are now with the purple that is light. So let's grab that sheet, which is this one. And we said three and three eighths by seven eighths. So I'm gonna cut it at three and three eighths first. Three and three eighths. And then seven eighths. So in my head, I like to work backwards. Um, so it's easier for me to cut versus putting it to the seven eighths every time. So quarter two, three eighths, half, four and three eighths. So if I go to the four and three eighths, that's basically five times seven eighths. If I did my math right, I should be able to drop back seven eighths every time now. So if I'm here, then I'm gonna, so if this bothers, like if this is too hard for people to figure out, just cut seven eighths five times. But for me, I just like moving my paper this way. So I was at three eighths, then I go to half past and I, I count it like a clock, right? So half past, there's one. And then three eighths from the here, so that's another. And then we're at quarter two. <laughs> which is quarter two, and then we're back to seven eighths. And I felt like that was a lot easier for me than picking up the paper every time. I just like sliding it. All right, there's five of the little side strips. Three and three eighths by seven eighths. So that's what we're gonna glue around the edge of the box. Okay, so I'll save that for Gail. She might use that, and we're going to throw that little snibblings away. I think that that might officially be it for cutting, but again, you guys would cut as many sides you want and you have all of this left over, right? You have this pattern, you could decorate the sides with flowers, you could decorate them with this. Cut whatever you want for side strips for the side patterns. You, like, you could continue using this to do another one in purple. Purple and uh, all up to you to decide. I think for now, though, we're gonna make this one for Gail. So she needs, let's put these in a pile here. So one, two, three, and I'll make the purple one for her. And then these, we're gonna line them up. And those go with, let's grab the bases here. So that is the one that goes with, um, a petal pink one here. So that goes with this one. So you guys, I'm getting this all in order so that then it's easy peasy for assembly. And I think I just did that backwards. Hang on, coral and a pink and a freesia there. Okay, so that's that and I did Mine is going to be petal pink over here for her. <laughs> it's a little difficult. Okay, so there's that with a white one. And then she's got white, white, and white. This is a little bit of um, a lot of paper going on. Okay, so that's for that card. Then what we need to do, so we'll put that together, that one card together momentarily. This one right here is all coral. So let's pull out the coral one and we'll put this together in a second. But for now, I'm just kind of lining things up. So we need coral, coral, coral. One, two, and then this guy, that guy, this, and this. Okay, so that's that card to put together. Then we have this purplicious one. So we need all of our purples. Purple, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. You need that, 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 this. Okay, and then those three are for a later in life put together. And we're gonna put this one together next or when we get there. And then the last one is the evening evergreen. So I'm glad we have the right numbers. <laughs> and here's the other one. 
So we need the last four white insides. And we have these mats. Dun, 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 dun. All right. We'll set these aside for later. And so what we're going to do next is put these four cards together. And we're going to decorate the outside of the one box for Gail. All right. So we'll need a purplicious flower from over here. And what we'll need is this mat here. And we'll save. Oh, get that. There's actually going to be extra big flowers. There's actually another set of big flowers that you guys could always make another. Like there's more tops of these boxes, these guys. So very cool. All right. And we'll put that there's three there, three there. All right. And then when it comes to the flowers, oh man, I should have pulled out the flowers. So we're going to be doing one of those, one of these, the rest need to get intersorted into the piles. And all right, I think we're in good shape. So this is going to now require a little bit, a lot of gluing. All right. And this is ultimately the end product. And so I think what we could do to start is we could get glue happy, you guys. And so let's flip these over. And I'm gonna use my liquid glue to put adhesive on the back sides of all these. Oh, you guys, my glue is getting down to the end here. I can feel it. it's really light. All right, so there's that. And that. Let's get this guy on the top. A little bit, a lot of glue. So there's that one. And then this goes right in the middle of it. And I'm thinking I want them to go that way. I don't know, I feel like that's the direction they should go. And then you can just start putting your little side panels down on the outside of the box. If you choose to do the little flowers, that's perfectly fine. Or I should say the flower patterns, they look super cool as well. So then you gotta do the front here. I'm gonna do right to the bottom edge of the lip because that centers it best. Now you're gonna have to open this up and put these other guys. This one goes right on the front. And now if you wanna decorate your inside, I would say they're the same size panels or side strips. It was the seven eighths by three and three eighths. If you don't wanna see it naked in the inside, um, the panel, like the top and bottom panels would be, I think three and a quarter by three and a quarter, right? Yeah, three and a quarter by three and a quarter if you wanna decorate the inside. So, all right, so far so good, right? Then this goes over the top of that and then it comes time for our flowers. So we're gonna have to die cut these. So I'll save that for a second because I gotta go get the dies. But what we can do, oh, I might as well go. I, so the stamp set that's used here is Hello Ladybug and Framed Florets. So we are going to need to do, and I put celebrate and that little thing. So I need a moment. I need to go get Evergreen Ink, Freesia Ink, and Hello, Hello, Hello Ladybug. Here's what we need for sentiments. So we have that for the one. And for a special person goes on. And we use celebrate and for a special person. So let's get those stamped. And those are in the evening evergreen. And celebrate. So that's perfect because if you don't want it to be used for a person, like for a birthday, it says for a special person on a special day, celebrate. It could be a little retirement card. It could be almost anything because it doesn't imply that it is for the birthday. 
All right, Susan Bellamy, I'm glad that you got on for a moment and I hope you enjoy the replay. So we're gonna just do that on that one. And then you have another one and we got that one, this one, and then this one is the same size. So you might as well, if you guys wanna go and stamp all your little pieces all at the same time, you most certainly can. And then we have on the inside, I put celebrate in green. So let's do that one. So celebrate, celebrate, go on and celebrate. Okay, and then on the inside of the hello, I didn't put anything really. So let's go ahead and clean these. We're just making that one set. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull in hello. Hello. Get that stamped. And let's get this guy put away. I think I gotta go get framed florets. I got I couldn't find it on my first walkthrough. I didn't see it. So you guys gotta figure out if you like the flower better on the left or the right. Wait, there's a little difference. I actually kind of like it on the left better. So I'm going to do that on the left for these cards. So hello, and hello, and then we just have left to do the little whatever the side thing is on the inside. So that was called Hello Ladybug. Okay. Got those ready to go and what we can do oh I didn't score them ah interesting so I'm not gonna try to score it because I find that depending on the grain of the paper it's gonna give you little creases so I must have missed scoring these greenies but nothing we can't fix really quick so I just do that and I have this feeling that this one goes here. And then this one, let's get burnished, is with that. And we have this guy with this one. I'm gonna stamp those two with just the little side thingies. And petal pink. Okay, and that was this like that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna finish our box here momentarily. And we have ribbons on here though. So you guys came with the ribbon here, the checkered window pane. I'm gonna use gales and we're gonna have to make sure we grab our tear and tape. I did these two different ways too. I didn't know if, of which you would like better. I crisscrossed applesauce the one on this side, and then I did these straight. So it just depends what you like better. I personally like the straight because I like things straight, <laughs> but I know people like things to do kitty wampus or diagonal. So I just wanted to show you what it looked like to, to do it two different ways. You're welcome to do it whichever way you like best. And what we're gonna do is prep a whole bunch of tear and tape here. We actually need eight, I think, because there's four cards and each one will use so two, four, six, and do one more. So this one is closer to the bottom. So I'm going to put these two down here. And now it's just a matter of decorating your boxes. So we need that. And it's about an in and three quarters of an inch from the bottom. All right, and so there's this one. And we'll get that ready for gluing. Hi, Linda Hall. So that'll go with that one. And then this purplicious one, I've got this one now in the middle. And that's a double up of the ribbon. So you're gonna cut a piece and then cut another piece. And slightly 
above the middle area because then the other ribbon's gonna go kind of over it slightly. Now again, if you like it crooked, you could do the crooked thing. And then we're gonna prep that. And then this one just goes like that. Okay, so that's two of them ready to get matted. All right, that one goes on the green. This one goes here, so we're getting ready for those. Then this purpley one has the ribbon on the bottom, so we're gonna grab eight more pieces here. Three, four, and eight. And this one goes near the bottom. I'm gonna flip that over. and cut your little ribbon. So this is what's nice about having a roll. You can just cut exactly what you need. All right, so that'll go something about like here. Flip that. All right, so that goes with this one. And then we have the last one over here. We need to glue a little bit. And then we'll be able to do our ribbon. This one just so you get to see a little green border, and then this one goes in the middle. So let's see which way our flowers go like that. Sometimes you can tell there's a direction to the flowers, and sometimes you can't. And then this one, and this one has the two things of ribbon. So We'll cut a section here and another one. And for Gail, I'll show her too. One goes crisscross, right? If you like to do that, I'd put one like that and then have it go at an angle. And then this other one, that's all I did for crisscrossing them. Something like that. And then the tape. Now, Easy peasy so far, I think. We are gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on the rest of the area that doesn't have the tear and tape. Okay, and one more. All right, so now we're gonna glue these to the little mini bases. You get to see a little bit of petal pink coming through from the base. So there's one. Make sure you get them going the right way. This one goes here. This one goes over here. And then the last little guy, my flowers look like they should go that way, goes on your greenie. So those are so far, so far, so, so far what we have. So let's flip these over. I did pop these up with dimensionals. Let's grab this one. And then these go right onto the card front. And then the last thing I was doing was buying myself time to think about where are my dies? <laughs> Cause I don't want to fussy cut these things, <laughs> right? The dies are on sale. I don't know if they're still available or not. I can't remember if the last time I checked they were or not. Um, so these are ready. Uh, I remember the dies were $18 to get these. So if you do have a couple packs of this paper, it wouldn't hurt to have the dies because you can definitely use the dies for cutting out the paper. Um, the other thing too, I meant to tell you guys this when we first started, but I completely forgot, <laughs> got sidetracked. Um, the there's one more class that wasn't published yet. And I didn't have the cards um, when we were, I was working with Rose and got the technique club class cards ready to go. And I'm going to pull up the event so you guys can see the cards. 
Um, I'll show them to you as well. So then this one goes on this one like that. So those two are pretty much done. And then this one goes over here like that. One over here. And we just need to do the flowers and stamping the fragrant flowers. Okay. Let me make one more pass on the floor here to see if I can find my dies and the iridescent gems are super pretty on these cards and I've got a whole pack of them so we're gonna put a couple or I should say a few on this because now that completes this little set here these little cards except for the inside we got to do that yet okay I was just excited to put gems on could you tell hmm? all right so we're almost done with these I gotta go find dyes so give me 30 seconds again guys I'm gonna look for dyes Ta-da, they were on the counter where the boxes were just sitting. So, right next to where I had the class sitting. I love it. Okay, easy, fine now. All right, so let's get back to the insides. I have three of these are purplish, and two are more coral. Coral, so let's grab this and a little sheet of paper. So we need freesia here. So this little side stamp focal image is what came from the framed florets. It's part of it. So we have to do something on the inside. Can't have nakedness. And then this one here. And then the other ones will be in coral. So we'll grab coral and actually eh, let's do green because we can. Green is right here. Let's get this guy then. We'll be for that one. Okay. I think that for right now, that's all the stamping that we need to do. And I think that we can get this cleaned up. And then we'll glue these in. And then we'll do our little bit of die cutting to get our flowers done. Flower. All right, so a little bit of glue here. Hi, Sherry Martin, thanks for sharing. Oh man, I think we might have to open up a new glue. We're close. <laughs> oh man. Super close. All right, let's see what we got here. That's a purple one. So that's gonna go over here on this one. Like that. And this one is a purple one that says celebrate. Oh, I think I did them backwards, hang on. This one needs to go in that one. This one goes. The celebrate goes in this one. Like that. Now that one was supposed to go in this one. Because it says hello. Thank you. Cheryl brought me a glue. All right. Yeah, it's probably pretty light too. But that's okay. We'll have enough. Nope, I think that we just glued in the last of this. So 
So, you guys, we have the hellos going with nothing on the inside, and I put celebrate with these. So these two would be officially done. These, we need to do our little bits of die cutting. And what we can do is pull out the little mini boss, and we will put, so this fits it perfectly. You guys, that's where this, the dies come in really handy for this set. So this is the flower that actually goes on the top. And pull this out. I believe it fits on here, if I'm not mistaken. It just barely fits. All right, Feline, have a great day at work. <laughs> I hope that you got the general idea of what we're doing on these cards and you've got a good basis for what needs to happen. So then we have to grab one of these. I think once you guys get the boxes made that the decorating, well, the outside should go pretty good. All right, so there's that one, which we need. Oh man, so if that ever gets to that point, you grab a tool and that will help you pick that up. All right, and then one more is the coral flower. Just like this. So much easier. So again, <laughs> Don't use your fingernails to try to get that off if it's stuck really tight. Okay. Okay, so that's garbage. And now we can finish off the decorating part. Oh, that means company's coming when you drop a die on the floor. All right, so let's see what we have here. We need our ribbon back, which is right here, and tear and tape. And I would say prep yourself a little bit of tear and tape because you're gonna need it. On this flower, I decided to do mine the opposite side, right? So I'm gonna put some here and there, and the same with the purple here and here. And then I will prep Four more pieces here for after I get my ribbon down. So just a reminder, you guys, today is the last day of the annual catalog. So if there's anything that you want to get yet that isn't carrying over or if you want reduced pricing on something because the pricing might be going up, now is the time to do it. Um, <laughs> Tomorrow starts the launch of the new annual catalog. And so you'll be able to order all that new stuff starting tomorrow. So when I do this, you guys, I start a little bit away, which gives me room for the little loop. And then I bring the tail out like that. And we're gonna cover that one with some tear and tape. So he's ready. Bring it that underneath and then this one same thing I start a little bit away make that loop and then have the tail come out so you're not really wasting any ribbon at all and then secure that with tear and tape and one last one here hi Jean Maxwell from Phoenix you know my number you sure do Feline <laughs> you know where to find me all right, all right, so there's that. So these are pretty much ready to put on our cards, but as long as we got working on a ribbon, we're gonna put the ribbon behind these flowers. So you're gonna need a little bit longer pieces, I think. So we need six, I think, five and six. And one set is gonna be over here. The other set is over here, and one set is over here. So 
and pick all those off. And let's hold it this way. So we've got a big loop coming out this way. And then it comes back. Catch that tear and tape in the back. And then make another loop. And I think I'm gonna make it a hair longer. And then this last little tail will come out like that. So I'll show you the back side so you can see what it looks like. So that's what the front looks like, but then the back, I just wove it back and forth like that. Okay. Then the other side up here, we're gonna do a loop and a tail. So catch the back, make your loop and your tail. Cover that up with tear and tape. You know, you gotta do the tear and tape almost every time. And then the last one's gonna be coming out here. And I did, did a loop, a loop, and a tail. So I'm kind of guessing here. I'm gonna go here, make a loop, and then make a loop, and then a tail. And then cover that up. So you get to feel like a floral arranger. All right, so let's see what that looks like on the top of the box now. So that'll fit there. It doesn't have to sit all within the edge. You can have it hanging over. And then what I'm gonna do is use dimensionals. So that's not the right one. I feel like there's one over here. Glue, okay. So I like for there to be dimensionals along the edges. And then I'm going to put liquid glue in the middle so it kind of makes it like the edges are popped up oh man ah, so close so this is going to go on here something like that and then grab some of your embellishments them on the edge here those iridescent ones look so pretty with this and then one guy can go there so there's our outside completed yay okay then we have these last two cards to have our little flowers go on I'm just gonna pop the purple on and the coral on so that's gonna, gonna hang out over here and over here Very nice. Okay, so because of the leaves hanging over the edge slightly, I think I'm gonna put a double stack right on that back side of that one. And I think I'm gonna do it over here as well. So I'm gonna just flip the leaf back. All right, so those are good. And we just need to get our little bit of gems on. Grab those iridescent rhinestones, and I've got two of them on the actual petal pink and fresh freesia, and then one big one near the top. That find a little spot to have it go in. There we go. Those are those two. And then these are the, the other two. Now, you do have more little flowers. If you prefer to not have it look like this and you want more flowers showing on, you could definitely do that. And if you like these more, you could definitely do that. You guys have the ability to cut the paper how you would like it to be. So what size? And I feel like we need another dimension right there. It wasn't sticking good enough by my book. Okay. So let's, <laughs> it did take two hours for this class. I wasn't quite sure what we were going to end up with, but let's kind of regroup what we did. We cut the boxes. So we cut all, so from the beginning, you guys, we started off, we cut the lids and we cut bases and then we cut our mats for the tops of the boxes. So that's ready to go. And then we cut all of our little mini cards here. So we've got all these little mini ready to go. 
so that when it comes time, you can just work on a little bit of stamping and assembly. The little flowers here, I'm gonna pull these up in as well and put one, get them set here so Gail has them. And then we had this one, this, and this one. Okay, so this is ultimately what is left to put together. And this is what we did put together. We put together the one box and we got four cards done. And then in your package from me, you had your little mini note cards and envelopes. And so when you're giving this, excuse me. Thanks mom. So let's just open this up. So if you wanna fit more in here, you guys could make more um, because there's room in the box there's more space, so there's four here. One, two, three, four. So you'd put your four little envelopes in here and then put your favorite one on the top. And you see, you'd have room for two more little mini cards. If you wanna make six total, you definitely could. And then this is what you could give to somebody as an awesome little gift. I am very happy with how this turned out. <laughs> so it's fun. All right. Very nice. Okay, Kimberly says that it's very nice. Good, good. Um, ah, you guys have plenty of cards. Like, you have plenty of the designer paper left here, right? This was all extra for you to make more and do your little side strips. And the other thing you have extra to with cardstock is this is what you have left for cardstock. So you could have had more little uh, mats. With this, you would just have to add your own little bases that are the three by sixes. So I'll put that ready for Gail. And I don't know, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> it was kind of fun. Once we got into this, it kind of started to flow in really nicely. Um, I don't know. Um, I will do a little door prize here. I think I need that for a finishing one. I'm gonna do a door prize for you guys to see who wins um, a gift for doing class today. Everybody's names that are in. Um, and I was gonna also show you guys the cards that we have from Rose. Thanks, Mary Schreiber. So Rose sent me, Rose sent me, oh, where are they? I just passed my bet. No, there you are. So this is card number one. Um, the Boca Technique is what's being featured. So that you guys just, uh, this is the April, I didn't have these to show off for the showcase on Friday. So this is a little side note for the showcase. This is a side step kind of, like an easel kind of, kind of, where it's got three different layers on the side. It features beautiful balloons and the Boca technique is what is going on here. So this is the Technique Club class for May. And then there's So Thrilled for You. And then I've got Let's Get Our Celebration On. So those are the three cards. Plus you'll get the little um, recipe card for how to do the Boca technique. And you'll get the little sample to put in your little, um, your recipe book. So that's, and that's already out there. Um, and I created the event. If you go to the events calendar and you go to May, it's already May, you guys. So if you come here to the events calendar for May, um, it's the 16th Technique Club class with Rose and me. And so I've got the cover photo out there already and I updated the information to say the Technique and Beautiful Balloons. And this is the class that's free with a $50 order and you start to collect your Technique cards. And then you also, at the end of 10 months, get the $75 um, in host rewards and a half off item. Oh, Becky said she loves it, yay. All right, so a reminder to anybody that joined me a little bit late, um, I am working on, sorry, my nose started to run. It's still cold in here. Um, I started to work on um, emails this morning. I had about three hours that I worked um, and I got back from basically from today all the way to like somewhere through Saturday. So if you sent me an email since last Monday to Friday, I'm going to be working on those um, in throughout the day. Uh, now that I'm done with class moms here, we're going to ship out some stuff this afternoon and then I'll be working on emails again. So uh, I thank you everybody for your patience on the emails and I hope you enjoyed the little box class that we had here. Uh, I think it was fun. It was definitely a different one and I'm curious, did you, like there's another box that I have um, set up to do because we were originally going to do a different box and then we altered it into this box instead. But I'm curious if you guys liked this one. Um, you think you're going to get your stuff made? I hope so. <laughs> In time for Mother's Day. Um, Linda Hall says she loves the cards and boxes. Yay. All right. Again, if you want to get this class, you guys, 
I'll email the PDF tutorials included in the cost. It's $50 or 63 mailed because it's a uh, big pack of paper. Um, so it's $13 for mailing. Um, it would also include, you know, the cardstock that you need, the gems, the ribbon, and the, um, the little baby envelopes. So, all right, let's grab a piece of paper here or a pencil, I should say. And so I had, um, Patsy Roberts. So Patsy Roberts, I don't know if you're watching right now, but I just saw an email come through for you that you want to add this class on. So I'm going to add your name and you make number 32. <laughs> Kimberly says, make sure to hit the like button. Yes. All right. So I'm going to drop the camera down here once I pull up random number generator. And we are going to put in 32 people and we're going to hit the word generate and you guys can see what I've got here, I've got 32, hit generate. Number three is Sherry Everett. All right, Sherry, good job. All right, I have a door prize that I will send for you. Um, and Hildy, now that you watched it, can't start to wait cutting. Start, can't wait to start cutting. Pat Thomas said, I hope you get the boxes right. So if you guys need to like pause and watch the video, right? I hope I went slow enough for everybody that you it wasn't hopefully confusing. Start with, bye Kim, we'll see you later. Um, start with the boxes, right? The five and a half by five and a half, and then score each one one inch from each side, and then look at the diagram to see how to do your cutting and watch the video. And once you have your boxes pretty much cut and scored, to put them together is not as difficult. Watch the video again. That's why the video is there. Uh, you can start it, stop it, pause it, whatever you need to do. Um, but with, if you're ever hesitating, just look at it and like, look at the pictures, um, before cutting off something wrong. And if it does get cut wrong, just know it's only paper and they make more of it every day and just use a different piece. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but have fun with it. Oh, thanks, Luann. Have fun with it. Um, like the process of making these boxes is like, you're going to feel so accomplished when you're done with all four boxes and all 16 little mini cards. And then when you give them to somebody to brighten their day, I think you're going to feel even more, um, satisfying. So um, and, um, just happy. <laughs> so, all right. If you have questions, you guys don't hesitate to reach out. Um, what else is there now? So it's when, so tomorrow is the day, first day of the catalog launch. Um, if anybody still needs to get signed up for the DSP sampler, please let me know by tonight. Um, if I have extra, then, then I'll start talking about that. Um, and also with the product shares, uh, you can sign up for product share anytime. Just know that I know for sure if you, um, pay me for the product share through tonight, then I will be able to include it in my order that I'm doing tomorrow and I'm doing two day shipping. So I'll be able to start working on the product shares and processing them and working on the DSP sampler. They aren't shipping out next week. They're shipping out the following week. So I believe that on my calendar, the week they are the week of May 15th. So I, I can't process them in the next, you know, they first arrive on Thursday uh, for all the product. And then I'm going to need next week just to keep working on cutting the paper and cutting the embellishments. And so my plan is to mail all that stuff the week of the 15th. So, all right. Um, what else then? So we have class on um, the third, you guys, the Share, Create, and Inspire card class is on Wednesday morning. We're gonna be using Millie Kindle's recipe that she sent me. So that's at 10 o'clock um, Wednesday morning. And then on Thursday night, we have the May monthly class cards. And I have plenty of kits left over for that one too, in case anybody still wants to get signed up for the May monthly cards featuring Grassy Groves, um, Sun Prince, and Sweet Citrus. So yes, measure twice, cut once, and watch carefully would be your approach. And don't overthink it too. Like if it seems like it feels right, try it. And the other thing too, Pat, I would recommend for anybody else too, use copy paper. Practice on a piece of copy paper or a magazine, something that you can cut apart, right? So don't use your actual cardstock or designer paper first. Practice on something that you could care less if it isn't right, right? That's a good way to look at it too, is practice on something that you don't care about or a bad piece of cardstock, right? You Or some white cardstock. So yes, Jean Maxwell, the scavenger hunt um, is on my to-do list to write that this week. I promised you that by the end of the week. So um, definitely, I, my goal is to have it by the 5th. I mean, you still have three weeks to work on it then. So, um, or a good solid three and a half weeks. So, yep, it's on my radar. Uh, definitely not going to be working on it today or tomorrow though. <laughs> I have about probably five days worth of emails to get through. And then tomorrow is the launch of the catalog. So I'll be working on orders whenever I can get in and, and do orders. Um, and then tomorrow I probably 
we'll be able to catch up on the rest of the emails. <laughs> so, but scavenger hunt, my goal is to have it out by Friday. So, all right, you guys, I think that's it. Mom's here. We're going to work on birthday cards for May. Um, we are a little bit tardy. They normally go out on the first of the month. Yeah, they can still go out on the first of the month. Or we usually we mail them the day before the last, you know, like the last day of the month. But we're still going to get them out today for those May birthdays that um, I have birthdays for. So, all right. So good job, you guys. We did it. We got through a box class. <laughs> all right. Lots of sunshine. Love and hugs, you guys. We will see you on Wednesday morning at 10 for the Share, Create, Inspire class. All right. Love you a long time. I'm going to count to 10 just in case it cuts out early. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 